If you lose yourself now, you ain't even drafted yet. What the hell are you going to do once you get a little money? Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Keith Adams, and with me today is my tag team partner, and I'm going to kick it back to uh, NWA uh, World Championship Wrestling on TBS. He is the Sean Royal to my Chris Champion in the new breed. That's what I've been watching this week, fans. The icon, the showstopper, the main event, and the reason why we are here, Coach Mike Francis and Coach, they used to come out to fight for your right to party. And uh, again, I don't know how all this license and stuff works, but uh, mm. they they were entertaining. They were supposed to be from 2002, and it was like 1987. So that was like mm. a big deal. Um, so anyway, how you doing, brother? Doing well, doing well. Thank you. I keep resetting stuff, man. And my friends are like, how do you remember that? And I was like, ah, whatever. I, I love wrestling, man. It was, it was good stuff. So uh, on this episode, we're going to talk about NFL draft prep. We're going to talk about the approved rule changes. So a few weeks ago, we said, here's what was proposed. Now we're going to tell you what's been approved. So that doesn't sneak by you uh, week seven of the season when it comes up. And uh, I'm going to get Mike's opinion about OTAs. And I I got to get his thoughts. Uh, So let's get started, man. Jalen Carter. So, Mike, I'm going to give you this math equation, and you tell me if I'm crazy, but Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter is declining visits with any team selecting outside the top 10, according to his agent, Drew Rosenhaus. So, fans, if you recall, he was in the situation where uh, some Georgia staff members lost their lives. Uh, He came into his own pro day uh, about 10 pounds heavier. And he was so out of condition that he didn't even finish his drills. Yet his agent just said, nah, if you're not in the top 10, I'm not interviewing with you. Mike, tell me how that works. And does that matter for you? Because as I'm sure you're going to tell me, you saw the tape. (laughs) I saw the tape, but he's going to have to show me something because he got to let me know that he's taking it serious. You can't take time off or lose. Um. You know, just lose yourself. If you lose yourself now, you ain't even drafted yet. What the hell are you going to do once you get a little money? So you got to be able to, you know, show me some difference. I don't understand. Not, I understand why Drew Rosenhaus is doing it. This just makes it more of an emphasis for him to, uh, it builds his stock. Because then everyone who's interviewing him, you know, he, he doesn't plan to drop too far. That's the thing. But the way he's, you know, if he was overweight and all that, man, that that's, that doesn't look good for him. It yes. doesn't. And, and I don't know how Drew Rosenhaus allowed that to happen. Like, that ain't something – that's not a Drew Rosenhaus move, you know. The the interviewing is, but not, you know, being out of shape. Well, he was nine pounds heavier at uh, at his pro day than he was at the scouting combine. So how – but how, how much was that? Like uh, he weighed three twenty three at Georgia's pro day last month. Uh, he opted to only do position drills, which he didn't finish, and he didn't do the forty, the cone drills, or other physical tests. But Mike, he was a unanimous All American, All SEC first team. How and tall is he? Six three. Oh, he all right. <laughs> yeah. No, he can carry that six three. That's a good frame. Okay, six three three twenty three. That ain't bad. I think it. The highest AJ played was 330, maybe. Okay. Maybe even more than that. He started the season like it. Oh, that, dude, that dude down Maryland made them get under 300 pounds like he was still at UConn or something playing little guys. You in the ACC with a defensive line, nobody over 300 pounds. You wonder why you getting ran up in like a like it's a brothel or something. Okay. So you still think he'll be a top 10 pick, though? I think. It would be hard for me to see in the video. It would be hard for me to pass on him if I'm down there and I really need a defense alignment. But then I might have to follow up later on in the rounds with someone else. So, for instance, I might have to go out second round and third round and try to get some a little insurance because that sounds like it's it's going to it's 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 heading the wrong direction already. All right. Speaking of heading in the wrong direction, 
the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, God. Got to talk about the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore we... Ravens declined to answer any questions about Lamar Jackson at their pre draft news conference. But bad. general manager Eric DaCosta did have something to say about the Baltimore quarterback position. DaCosta acknowledged the possibility of the Ravens selecting a quarterback in the first round. And he says it depends on who's on the board. You see, the Ravens picked 22nd. And uh, there's a certain guy that just might be available, um, you know, depending on when they pick. And that guy might be Hendon Hooker. Mm -hmm. Um, So I doubt it. We'll talk a little bit about Hendon later. But um, you got Ohio State's C.J. Stroud. You got Alabama's Bryce Young expected to go as top two picks. You have Florida's Anthony Richardson and Will Levis from Kentucky. Uh, and then, of course, my partner really liked Hendon Hooker. He said that all last year. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and then he got injured uh, with the ACL. Yep. Uh, but out of those quarterbacks, Mike, uh, who do you actually like You know, out of those quarterbacks? C.J., Bryce, you know, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, who you, you've looked at a, a lot as well. Um, you know, give me who you would like. I like Henry Hooker. I, I'm sorry. Uh, for that that pocket style, standing there big and tall with the arm, with the leadership, like I like him. I love his leadership, but you can see him uh, just, just leading Tennessee. They fell off when he left. I like Young as well for his leadership, and he's a winner. Like his record speaks for itself. At the end of the day, I I show no emotion. I have no emotional tie to anything but winning. <laughs> yes, the That's, win will, will will be the elixir. <laughs> exactly, it's the greatest medicine ever, and okay. the best cologne, as we say. <laughs> All right, so we'll talk a little Hinda Hooker at the end of the segment. But the Colts, the Colts hold the fourth pick. They haven't publicly expressed any interest in trading for Lamar Jackson, um, but they need a quarterback, and they're going to draft a quarterback. And uh, I have no idea what the best fit for the Colts will be because I don't know what they're doing. (laughs) I don't know what they're doing. Uh, I I picked the Colts uh, last year. I thought they had a good running back, and I thought having Matty Ice, a little veteran presence, and, and all of that just failed miserably. Um, so if you're the Colts um, and you're picking four, who's going to be left that you would get? Because they're picking four. And uh, I they, think uh, CJ uh, and uh, Bryce Young will be gone. So we're looking at Anthony Richardson. We're looking at Will Levis. Possibly Hendon Hooker would be Hendon there. Hooker would have to be. I don't care where I'm at. I- Everyone loves the Ohio State kid. I know he's a very good quarterback, but if I'm choosing apples to apples, I'm still taking him to hooker over the kid from Ohio State. I, I, I'm I'm always going to be on the Ohio State bias. Like, I just can't do it. Like, they get a little more hype than everyone else, and it's not necessarily the shit don't translate. Like, mm-hmm. let's look at all the let's look at all the guys before. Like, honestly. All right, so let's actually talk about Hendon Hooker, man. Uh, He's drawing interest from those teams. Uh, The Tennessee quarterback has been compared to Geno Smith for his veteran-level pocket presence, Um, and he seems to be a safer choice than Florida's Anthony Richardson because Anthony Richardson doesn't have a large sample size. He just has the metrics and the whatever. Uh, And then Will Levis is a big guy. But again, he went down his last year compared to his uh, previous season. But Mike, as as I talked to you in the pre-show meeting, uh, Hendon Hooker is 25, and he's coming off an ACL injury. Um, there's a lot of questions about his inexperience as a progression passer. You would know more than I do, but man. I, like you, liked what I saw, and he took a visit to the Commanders, believe it or not, and he also visited the Raiders. So, um, you know, any final thoughts before we close this segment? Smart young man to go visit those two teams. I mean, money is money. Yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm sorry. (laughs) I used to tell everybody, I don't care who's coming in here for AJ. 
<laughs> nah. check the checks will check. clear. That's, that's right. No, the there will be no out. insufficient funds with an NFL check. There'll be a lot of things, but insufficient funds will be one of them. I mean, look what's hanging on my wall. And you know I'm a devout <laughs> Cowboy fan. <laughs> I ain't got one Cowboy jersey hanging up in here. <laughs> uh, I will tell you, though, man, that 25 does give me pause, man. 25 is 25, man. Chamonix mm. crickets. But, hey. I like Hendon Hooker, too, and we'll be uh, checking it out. And when we get back, we're going to talk about the approved rule changes now. And Mike will let you know uh, whether or not you're going to be mad like week six when a call happens. We'll be right back on the Odd Coaches Podcast. Why should student athletes use the CKA Save Project Academic and Athletic Consulting Services? Over the past 15 to 20 years, colleges, universities, professional sports teams, business organizations, and others have increased their use of consulting services to improve their decision-making processes and results. Over the same time, the athletic and academic landscape has changed for high school and college student athletes as the NCAA has raised initial academic eligibility requirements for student athletes while decreasing the number of transfer restrictions. Former college student-athletes have noted that they were academic and athletically unprepared for the rigors of college. Let the CKA Save Project's close to 30 years of academic and athletic experience help guide student-athletes to increase success as we work to help student-athletes achieve the goal of obtaining a college degree. For more information, contact Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cka-saveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coach Podcast. And in segment two, we want to talk about the approved rule changes uh, for the 2023 season. Um, Philadelphia, you can use the number zero uh, to allow kickers and punters to use any jersey between zero and 49 and 90 to 99. So there you go, Mike. You didn't care about the kicker. I didn't care. Put put kicker on the I believe the quote was, everybody know you to kick. Okay. Everybody know. Just put kick on the back. Okay. Los Angeles Chargers. You can make adjustment of the play clock following an instant replay reversal consistent with other timing rules. Uh, I don't mind that at all uh, to make sure you get it right. Let's just make sure we get it right. Houston. Expand replays officials' jurisdiction to allow review on failed fourth down attempts. What do you uh, think about that? Yeah, uh, that we're going to review them four for ones with the pile up now? Yep. That's what it looks like. All right. All right. The competition committee uh, changed the definition of a launch to leaving with one or both feet. Nothing? I don't understand why. Like, I, I mean. Safety and uh, I can't say security. I'm not in the school system, but safety. Is that only for the quarterback though? That's my point. Like I'm I'm tired of these damn quarterback rules. No, no, no. I believe it has to do with the cornerbacks and the and the defensive backs and you know, going after, you know, separating uh separating the uh <laughs> receiver. <laughs> so what are they supposed to tag them now? Stop it. I'm asking. Okay. Let's put it just like we did um, you know. All right. Real- Let's Competition it. committee. Make a penalty for tripping a personal foul. Is that all right? I'm trying to figure out how often does that happen to where it warrants <laughs> such a, you know, like face mask and stuff like that. That happens, but tripping happens at that level too? I don't know. All right. Competition committee. To make the penalty for illegal handing the ball forward consistent with other illegal acts, such as illegal forward pass. I believe you said that happened once every 17 years or something like that. I've only seen Uh, it once. Okay. All right. Competition committee. To make it a penalty for illegal punts, drop kicks, or place kicks consistent with other illegal acts, such as illegal forward pass. Apparently, their needle stuck on some type of illegal forward pass. Uh, who got beat on the illegal forward pass? That <laughs> makes every, like, that's where it usually happens. They still ain't solved the problem of the Saints game. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Competition committee. To prevent the offense from benefiting by an extension of the half as a result of their foul. I don't even know what that is. So, 
extension right. of the half, like if it's a, if a penalty happens, the last play of the half. Uh-huh. You can't get the extra play? Is that it? Yeah, you can't. If it's the offensive, if it's an offensive penalty, there is no extra play. Yeah, so then I got to send it back five and replay it down or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Competition committee. Clarify the use of helmet against an opponent by removing the butt ram spear language from Article 8 and incorporating those actions into impermissible use of the helmet. All right, so we got the bylaws. Uh, competition committee. Change the claiming period uh, to Monday for players who are waived on Friday and Saturday. Is that a better help? Say it again. All right. So they're changing the claiming period to Monday for players who are waived on the Friday and Saturday of the previous week. So you can claim them on Monday instead of Tuesday, I believe. Yeah, you can get them in the building quicker. That'll help. I think that's good. All right. Now this one. Uh, Insert strength of victory as the second tiebreaker for awarding contracts. Insert who? Strength of victory. So if you're beating people, um, that's going to help you, uh, you know, in in the tiebreak. That's going to be the second tiebreak. So strength of schedule. Strength of victory, meaning you're beating people. Yeah, yeah, but who you beat as opposed to (laughs) the other person you beat. I mean, yeah. All right. Uh, adjust the rules for postseason signings to account for standard evaluation rules to freeze postseason rosters at 4 p.m. on the Wednesday following the last week of the regular season so you can't cheat and bootleg. Okay. Um, and then the last bunch of folks uh, has to do with rosters. So this is getting into the weeds, but I like this. So Buffalo. Uh, this was approved to make regular season and postseason roster transaction deadlines the same. Changes the transaction deadline for Saturday night postseason games to 4 o'clock on Saturday. So you can still sneak that player in. Um, the Chargers provide greater clarity to players' availabilities for games. Remember, there were some teams who tried to Pat Riley <laughs> some, oh some of the stuff this season with the injuries. Okay, so... And then finally, this is by uh, a whole lot of teams to establish one preseason roster reduction date and related procedures. So um, this was uh, very in favor by the majority of teams in the league. So that's what we got, Mike. We've got some new rules. We can adjust the roster. And I can hear now somebody's going to be mad that they snuck something through the censors uh, late in the season. And uh, why could be post-trade deadline? There's a little prediction for me. Uh, anything catch your eye before we go to our final segment, sir? No, nothing catch my eye. Just because they still didn't fix the same situation. They feel, yeah. I mean, it's just boring. They they're bored and they're looking at all these things that like that didn't affect the product on the field to me. Nothing we talked about today affected okay. the product. Somebody's a little butt hurt because somebody got over a play that they thought that would have changed their season. No forward handoffs. Like. All right. So now, fans, in segment three, we're going to get you ready for OTAs. Explain that concept and then give you some insight. We'll be right back on the iCoaches podcast. The high school and college academic and athletic landscape is changing. The growing number of college transfers, as well as student athletes being able to profit off the use of their name, image, and likeness has given student athletes the freedom and power to make life-changing decisions. That is why it is important for student athletes to be properly informed throughout the decision-making process. The difference between success and failure is often measured not by yards, but by inches, and even the most successful coaches and players use outside independent consultants to help improve their decision-making, which improves their results. That is what the CKA Save Project would like to do for student athletes across the country, improve their academic and athletic results. Our academic and athletic consulting services assist student athletes with the college decision-making process. The CKA team of former high school and college coaches can provide student athletes an independent assessment of their academic and athletic skills to assist student athletes in their college decision-making process. Let the CKA team evaluate your academic and athletic ability to assist you in finding the right fit for your academic and athletic career. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org 
or schedule a free virtual consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by email at cka at cksaveproject.org. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment three. We are now getting ready for the 2023-2024 season. So the first day of uh, camp and, and activities, uh, April 10th, 11th, 17th, 24. So people will officially be in the building, Mike. Voluntary mini camp, always hated that word. April 25th, 27th, uh, organized team activities, also known as OTAs, uh, begin May 22nd. Mm-hmm. And that goes all the way to June uh, 8th, and then mandatory minicamp be in June. So we're about eight weeks away from them physically having to be uh, where they're supposed to be. So uh, with that being said, Mike, uh, your coach, Ben Ness, um, how are you looking at this upcoming calendar? you got the draft coming up. You've got people coming back into the office. Are you just happy to see people? Are you looking for them to be a certain weight? Well, how are you approaching this as a football coach? OTA, they better come in with uh, in in decent. I mean, they ain't got to come in like at their playing weight, but they got to come in. They can't come in fifteen pounds over. Though. Like we ain't trying to do that there. We ain't yeah. trying to do that. I need you to take care of your body. I know you only get paid during the season, but this is a commitment to the program. You know, and a, and a lot of bonuses are based on. Oh yeah, you know, it's in the contract. It's in the contract. They don't play that. <laughs> All right, so welcome back. And I and I and I did this one on purpose to kind of sneak in Lamar, but Bobby Wagner is coming back to the Seattle Seahawks, um, and he's going to wear his familiar number. And he left under dubious circumstances last year. Uh, and he said, you know what? It didn't end great, but I'm back and I'm looking forward to, uh, playing for the Seahawks. Uh, Mike won. Bobby left. It wasn't, wasn't pleasant. Mm -hmm. He saw how the other half lived, had a horrible year with the Rams. Seahawks kind of did pretty good without him. Um, you even mentioned AJ said how much he enjoyed playing for Pete Carroll mm. and in Seattle itself. Love it. Um, so, how do you feel about Bobby uh, putting Mister Ego to the side and saying, "You know what? Uh, we'll figure out the money, and I'm coming back." Tell me what you think. He could have got a taste of some other organization that don't do things like they do in Seattle. Competition Wednesdays. AJ loved it. It made guys want to be at practice on Competition Wednesdays. Competition Wednesdays included everything but football. So they like shot free throws, shot three pointers, played ping pong, shot pool, bowling, anything like that was competition Wednesday. It had nothing to do with football. So the guys just compete against each other, you know, for whatever reason. That's where he organized it, Seattle. Bobby, I don't know if this is much as him worrying about something else or him trying to get back so he can retire as a Seahawk. That's that's the way I look at it. All right. Like so, more importantly for him, I think he's trying to retire as a Seahawk. Yeah, and then you get to uh collect checks for like, you know, perpetuity. <laughs> so well, he already got that. He he's already got his five years in. So so with that being said, it didn't end well and they rectified the situation. Mm-hmm. See a scenario where Baltimore and Lamar rectify their situation where you think this is uh past the point and overturn. Hmm. Um, I, I think they're going to hold out and make this thing go the way it is. I know they're going to make it be like this. But I, I don't like the way it's going, but I, I don't see them letting him go. I just don't see them letting him go. Yeah. At um, all. All right. So the Las Vegas Raiders have signed quarterback Brian Hoyer to a two-year deal. So earlier this season, Raiders signed Jimmy Garoppolo, three years, $72 million. Okay, And they also have the seventh pick in this month's draft. Hmm. Hoyer was released by, wait for it, the New England Patriots prior to the start of free agency. Um, he is 37, 
So he just got a two-year deal. He had one year remaining on his contract, which included a $1.4 million guarantee. Uh, the Raiders also added former Patriots player Danny Amendola to the coaching staff uh, to work with return specialists. And again, they got the seventh pick. So if you're the Raiders, do you try to grab one of those quarterbacks? So you got Jimmy G for the first three years, and then you got uh, the Hoyer kid as kid. He's 37 uh, as one of those, you know, player coaches. And then you get this, uh, you know, top whatever player ready. Uh, Mm -hmm. How would you book that as the Raiders as you continue to get these New England players and folks into your system? Oh, Uh. Somebody's going to be around at seven. Somebody has to be, right? If that Richardson kid's around at seven. From Florida, you got to take him. I like uh, both, you got to take him. You got to take him. I like him. Again, him and Henry Hooker, I like both of them. Like, I, I, you look at all these dudes in the NFL now, like, both of them can lose like everybody else. Like, I, 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 that's, I mean, let's be honest. Like there's only a small percentage of quarterbacks that's really great and it's going to win, win, win consistently. You can it's five of them maybe, but you got how many NFL teams? So give these guys a chance to lose like you do all them other bums that you that you draft and you pay so much money to and don't even care about because they got the right look. You know what I mean? These two can lose too. They got a right to failure. All right. So now got to talk about New England. Mac Jones isn't happy. Belichick isn't happy with him, and there's word on the street that Belichick is looking to move him out because Mac Jones kept seeking uh, outside opinions, uh, I believe from the coaches at the University of Alabama. Um, So how would you handle this situation? And Mac Jones is only 24, so uh, next year he could start again in the (laughs) SEC. How would you handle this situation He's if you're Mac Jones? Stuck. I can't. I'm stopped, man. Ben Stinson, Stetson Ben is 26, and the hook is 25. You know, with a little more seasoning, he'd go back and play the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted the new kids. <laughs> he ain't kids. It's hard to believe 24 year old. They tell him, what's up, Rook? <laughs> In college. college. Man, it's not serious, <laughs> In college, he a rookie in 24. Uh, why is Belichick? Uh, all right. So, Follerin would call me during, you know, his time at Mason if he was having a bad day or yeah. something. And most of the conversations went to, you know, you're not playing defense. You know, you're not doing this. So, you know, you want a hug and a kiss. Go call somebody else. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and I know the, the staffs at Alabama and New England are close. So maybe somebody uh, say, hey, you know, Matt called, you know, snitch, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Call it. <laughs> why, why is this a big deal? And uh, they could literally think about trading this guy. Is, is, is this some like blasphemy or something? I don't know. I, I mean, who, who they call? the fools that had Matt Patricia and, yeah. and whoever call it yeah. plays. So who did he call though? I mean, I'm sure he called, you know, whoever his quarterback coach was. Or, I'm sure he did. Guys call their coach. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're not trying to, you know, well, I, I know I was and I know you weren't. I'm sure other coaches. And this is how we got the transfer portal thing going. But but Stop. seriously, they, they are literally thinking about trading this guy. I don't understand why. So let's see here. Mike Florio reported that at the annual owners meeting, Belichick was careful not to co- commit to Jones as a starter, but it is well documented that Robert Kraft likes him. So uh, things are not kind of going well in New England, man, and and it's their own fault. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't right, like gonna, it at all. We're going to keep an eye on New England, and finally we'll talk about the Chargers. The Los Angeles Superchargers. So Los Angeles Chargers running back, Austin Eckler, has played as well as anybody has his first couple of seasons. However, he ain't getting the money because they disrespect running backs like that. So he is entering the final season of a four-year, $24.5 million contract. Um, 
he's got to make it through the season to see who else is going to give him whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, he is the most productive all-purpose back, and his compensation's kind of capped. So if you are him, are you playing under the last year of the deal, or are you going to camp and suddenly, oh, my back is twinged, my hamstring mm. is a little tight and tender. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the elbow. Brain, <laughs> it's the elbow. All he's got to do. It's always the elbow. Your quarterback, it's got to be the elbow. It's but he's be. a running back. What's he? <laughs> oh, it's your shoulder. It's your shoulder. <laughs> so, Check's clear. Right away. Wait, wait, what's that? I got my fancy pen. And now, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to get COVID. I think he's going to get a lot of stuff. I'm going to get a $100 pen. <laughs> I'm paying the $100. This pen worth $100. Let me sign right here. Let's go. Well, hopefully he can stay healthy. Yes. Or it's one more year as an underpaid player playing with Justin Herbert. But, um, yeah, that running backs. Y'all love oh, man, take care of yourself, man. Take care of yourself. Mike, anything to add before we close out on our NFL episode, sir? No, nah, uh, it's going to be interesting to see as we go with the draft and interesting to see where this thing, this Lamar thing plays out. So. All right. So, fans, on behalf of my tag team partner, Coach Mike Francis, and sore elbows and shoulders around the country, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the I Coaches podcast. And we'll see you on the sidelines. Till next time, take care. The I Coaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student athlete, academic, and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F-R-A-N-C-H-I-Z-E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.